Hi everyone, this is Nika71 and welcome to this video where I will present you my new creation which is a replica of an articulated track, the foremost Delta 6x6. This model is made with LEGO Technic pieces, has three motors and is remote control using the Control Plus app from LEGO with a smartphone. It features motor reset drive and steering, suspension on all axle and openable element. But before going deeper in the function presentation, I would like to talk more about the original inspiration model. It is an articulated track, the 6x6 Delta from the Canadian manufacturer Foremost, which is mainly used in harsh terrain in oil field, thanks to its low pressure tire, chassis articulated steering and its payload. In addition, it can be equipped with many specific equipment for logistical support, remote drilling operation, pipeline and power line construction or maintenance. It gives a very versatile vehicle with a 6x6 drivetrain and unusual look. As my model was intended to have good off-roading capabilities, I have chosen the simpler version which is a transporter model with a rear bed and optional winch. Let's go back to my LEGO version and let's start the presentation of this model. This model is based on the 81 tractor tire from the LEGO Zitros in order to keep the dimension rather small. Indeed, I didn't want to use the bigger tire as I did on my Berlier T100 to keep the weight as low as possible. It results in a vehicle which measures 60 cm in length, 16 cm in width and 21 cm in height, with a weight of 1.9 kg. I have already explained the general building process on the creation with the series of videos on the Western Star, so I will talk more about some tips and how I build related to the function of this creation. Let's talk about the heart of this model, the drive train and the suspension. The drive train is composed of two helm motors which drive through gearing the central drive shaft, with front and rear axle on each extremity, so without central differential. I use the new reinforced constant velocity joint and as you can see it caused some problem on the back axle side because of the length of free stud axle which did not enable me to support the gearing on each side. So I need to build a more complicated structure to avoid cracking, things to know when you use these pieces. Then each shaft goes to each axle and drive it with gear reduction and a differential with no locking option. It will surely affect the climbing ability, as we will see later in the video, but help a lot for turning, especially with the central articulation steering. You may notice that the front axle have not stared pivot, as it is a chassis articulation which does the steering. It enables me to make very narrow axle of 13 studs to comply with the medium scale and be stronger, because I have more space to put reinforcement without the well collision. Speaking of the reinforcement of the drivetrain, here is a trick I use to brace correctly each side of the 12 tooth gearing, which drives the 20 tooth double gearing on the differential. I use the thin 5L lift arm below the differential which prevent the gearing to move too much. It is not perfect but help a lot to minimize the cracking sound. Then, the movement of the differential goes to the portal axle with a reduction of 3 to 1 on the wheel and two rear axles are connected using a double homocinetic joint. The speed of the axle has been chosen to be quite fast to be playable, especially on flat surface. Therefore, it is not a monster of torque as it has only two helm motors for driving and because I have chosen the gear ratio to make stall the motor under heavy load to avoid the damage. The main articulation has only one degree of freedom the steering, which means that the other axle have to have suspension to follow the terrain. On the front, this is a multi-link configuration with shock absorbers and pun hard hold. The two underneath links plus the above central links create the vertical suspension translation and the pun hard rod help to keep the axle in the center of the chassis. Then the two springs support the weight, which is quite important due to the cabin. The spring connection points are important to avoid the creep or bending over charge because of the lateral play inside the spring. That is why I have put these two parts to guide the spring and avoid the creep. You can see here the initial construction which caused a lot of bending and so not very effective suspension. The more the connection point is close to the wheel and guide enough, the better it is. 
The rear one is a bit different. It is indeed composed of a tandem axle, as on the rail vehicle, with a bogey design. The suspension are composed of two oscillating arms which connect the both axles. Additional connecting rods are placed above each axle to guide vertically each axle and create a parallelogram to ensure the travel suspension. Then, a last connecting rod acts as a pawn rod to secure the transversal motion during the crossing axle. As both axles are supported by the oscillating arm, which has its pivot on the center, no spring is required. The weight of the model is distributed over the two axles. It is a very common suspension design in track and is very close to the original except how it is made the draft train. Nevertheless, it gives me the occasion to talk more about the building of this part, especially on the suspension fixation point. Indeed, if you want that the model has a powerful and reliable overload, suspension and axle, you have to brace it correctly to avoid any play that can affect either the drivetrain, either the suspension. That is why the fixation point of the suspension, for instance the oscillating arm, the connecting rod, must be placed on a strong chassis to avoid the deformation. Because, if the chassis is stressed and deformed under load on suspension travel, then the fixation point will move and affect the geometry of the suspension and give play to the system. It is particularly noticeable when you drive back and forth. If the axle is not well secured, then a part of the power is lost within the play. But keep in mind it can also occur when the suspension works and so the chassis is deformed if you use springs. It is not a big deal that a part of the chassis is bent because sometimes you have to make compromise in terms of space, scale, etc. But if the chassis carries some material such as the drivetrain or suspension connection point, it has to be as strong as possible to avoid that, for instance by using frame, bent frame or beam. It leads to the same consideration about the drivetrain and where are located the driving motor. We should ensure that the motor and gearing are braced correctly on both sides and that the wall structure is strong enough to support the crossing of the axle or the bending of the chassis. If so, the deformation of the chassis will affect the drivetrain by adding friction on the axle. I usually build this part by adding a first layer of connection point, here the connector with support the drivetrain. Then I add a second layer of fixation, here the beam and the frame, which is 90 degrees the first one to connect the first layer and the motor to secure the first layer of fixation. And at the final, I had the last layer of fixation, here the crossing beam, which is connected to the frame in 90 degrees as well, to secure the entire construction. Therefore, it creates a very sturdy box to enclosure the motor and the drivetrain to reduce the friction caused by the possible deformation. The ideal would be to add a transverse frame to secure again two layers, but I have not the room, so I use beam and connector instead. We are now close for the steering, so let's talk about heat. The steering is made with an articulated chassis instead of pivot point on the wheel using knuckle. On the rail track, it enables to have simpler and heavier front axle, which authorizes a different weight repartition and bigger payload. But the vehicle with an articulated steering has also the advantages in turning on soft terrain like mud by making shorter corner and less maneuver as the front part of the truck moves to with the rear. But it has the disadvantage to be less easy to control for non-experimented driver and are also more unstable under load in corner. On my replica, the articulated steering is made with a L motor which drives two small linear actuators for gearing and new joint. The travel of each actuator is four stud, which means the center position is at half a stud position. That is why I use these pieces to create the fixation point and create the offset. On the central articulation, it is made using triangle parts which are connected underneath and above and then connected to each part of the chassis using connector with some reinforcement and space to let the linear actuator move. As the central articulation has only one degree of freedom, the steering, comparing to a double degree of freedom as on the Volvo hauler for instance, the more the two pivot points are far away, the more the articulation is sturdy. And you can see here the draft train you join facing the articulation. Above the steering mechanism, we can see the engine cover, which doesn't cover the engine but the battery. 
Indeed, there was not enough room to put a fake engine, so I put the Control Plus hub here. The cover can be removed to access to the connection button of the hub, and it can be removed to access the battery. You can see there is an available port on the Control Plus hub, which was intended at first for a winch or other accessory, but I decided to not create it, to keep the weight low as it is not very used in off-running, but the structure is ready to put the winch with the raw playout and the roller. So, if you want, you can add accessories with the available port. We move on the cabin with its particular design. Above the function, it has openable door and it can be removed as it is only fixed on four poles. Speaking of the placement, you can see the cabin float a bit on the chassis, as in rail, which is made again by using half stuffed connector. I think this kind of detail adds a lot to the look of the model because the above or below position will have not much anyway. About the construction, the particular shape of the cabin forced me to use many half stud construction to obtain the correct angle and proportion. You can see here how the top of the cabin is attached to the frame using half stud connector in both directions and that the door are consequently 9.5 stud in height. You can see the use of teal to cover the hole on the door and on the cabin, as well as choosing the correct orientation of the connector to have the smoothest shape as possible. A classic technique, but still effective. About the detail, you can see that I add a lot, as I did on my Western Star track. You can see the interior, my raw and windshield wiper, which I use small L bar and clips, but also light air cooler with Speed Champion rim as fan, and of course, the red rollover protection system, which I wish to have two additional 8L axles to replace this assembly in a thinner way. The front dark bush grey of the chassis has also a lot of detail, with brick slope, lights, grille and a chain. And you can see the two fuel tanks made with the wood plates and bricks, surrounded by the footrest made with a grey tile. All these small pieces, which is not technique, help a lot to add detail and some consistency to the design. And, as I did not have in my collection, I ordered them from Milan Brick, 1001 Brick, which is a French bricklink store. If you are French, you know this store which has been active for now 13 years and have a large stock and fast shipping, so perfect for my purpose. I truly recommend this store, I let you see the link in the description if you are interested. Do we have finished? No. We have a small part to cover before going for a ride, the bed. The bed is composed of many panels, it is ideal to contain the weight and I use the particular shape of the panel to enable more travel on the well. Indeed, the underneath of the panel is hollow, which means the well can reach higher points that I would using beam. The end of the bed is equipped with roller to facilitate the pulling of the load as in real and you can see some detail as the red guard, chain underneath, the light bumper and the winch roller. The bed can be removed from the chassis as it is attached with pins vertically and secure on the back, which means it contributes to the sturdiness of the chassis and being part of the design. There is not much to say about the bed, it is more decorative, so let's go for a ride and see how it performs. Here is a filming of a remand, a frozen garden with some snow, the temperature was below zero and the battery was about 80% charge. You can note that the model do not move with back and forth when driving, which means that the draft train and the suspension are correctly braced. Of course, it moves a bit on the difficult ground because of the speed I have chosen and consequently the available torque on the wheel. You can moreover hear the sound of the motor which vary on the obstacle. On the frozen snow, it is in this element, as the wheels can slip easily during the steering and the grip of the tire is good. For information, I have tested the balloon tire on this, which looks very nice as on the real truck can be equipped with, but the performance was not very good, especially on snow. On more difficult terrain, the truck can be struggled to pass obstacle because it has not differential locking, so I have to make some try and playing with the steering. Fortunately, 
The weight of the cabin and the battery box helps the front axle to have traction with the two rear axle pushes. But when the limit of suspension crossing is reached, the truck loses its traction. On harsh terrain like rock and pebble, the truck is performed well due to the sturdiness of the drivetrain and chassis, but will be limited by its suspension if there is high slope. Speaking of a high slope, here is the 45 degrees slope, with a quite flat but muddy terrain. The truck performs well too, but lacks some power to overcome some obstacles, and as soon the grip is losing, the lack of differential locking is problematic. Nevertheless, it has not been designed for that because of its weight and the long wheelbase, but more for flat surface and reasonable slip terrain to carry things. That is why I have put differential to help in maneuver. If you are looking for a very effective trial truck, take a simple crawler, less than 1 kilo, 4x4, 5 point axle, be with brink, be with motor and go with the sky. We have done, that was a long trip, but I think it worth it to talk in detail of some important elements. Even if the model is not a breakthrough in terms of performance or in design, it illustrates how combining the function with the draft train, suspension and the design with the detail. If you are interested by this creation, I let you check the link in the description to find more detail, pictures and the building instruction. Take care, play well, bye.